Early Saturday morning, SpaceX is scheduled to make history, conducting a critical test for the next human space flight. It will be the first time a commercially built and operated spacecraft capable of carrying humans will travel to the International Space Station. CBS News correspondent Mark Strassman reports from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. SpaceX Dragon, we are visors down. It's final approach for NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. Straight ahead, the International Space Station. All right, there's 10 meters. But they're not 250 miles above Earth. This is a training simulation at the headquarters of SpaceX in Hawthorne, California. Soft capture confirmed, attenuation in progress. Benkin and Hurley, both space shuttle veterans, will be the first astronauts to climb aboard a Falcon 9 rocket and into SpaceX's new ship called Crew Dragon. And liftoff. Falcon 9 is the company workhorse, launching 20 times last year. But Crew Dragon needs a successful test flight called Demo 1 before SpaceX can fly people. The goal, prove it can safely dock and undock from the space station re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and splash down off the Florida coast. And we have splash down. So your mission is riding on the success of Demo 1. Certainly. The only way to really demonstrate it is to fly it and prove it. You know, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. It's the, the show me state. And uh, having those successes under your belt goes a long way to giving confidence. And if something's going to go wrong, you want it to go wrong when it's uncrewed. Yeah, when we're not on the rocket, absolutely. The final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle, America will continue the dream. Once the space shuttle program ended in 2011, NASA has had one option to get to the space station, hitch a ride with the Russians. A round trip ticket on a Soyuz rocket costs $81 million per seat. That is now changing. NASA has hired two companies, SpaceX and Boeing, to design and build new space taxis. We are on the brink of launching American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. Jim Bridenstine is NASA's administrator. Some of this is American pride. Prestige. I like to use the word prestige. Great nations should be able to, to launch their own astronauts into space. Dragon SpaceX for C2V2. Both companies have learned space is hard. Both are running more than two years behind schedule. And with neither yet certified to fly people, NASA is considering buying two more Soyuz seats to guarantee continued American access to the space station. Are you concerned about the delays? So we don't like delays. We, we don't like delays. But worse than a delay is launching something that's not ready. Mission success and safety is the number one overriding concern, and we're not going to do anything to put these crew in jeopardy. There is no cost or schedule pressure here whatsoever. Inside the Crew Dragon capsule, SpaceX will send up a dummy named Ripley, a smart dummy equipped with sensors to gauge the impact of this flight. Mark Strassman, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. Joining me now from Merritt Island, Florida, to talk about this historic flight is CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. So, Bill, tell me, why is this test flight so significant? Well, really, if you think about it, ever since the shuttle stopped flying back in 2011, the United States has been relying on the Russians, as we just heard, uh, to carry American astronauts into space. We lost that capability. So restoring the capability to launch astronauts is a huge thing for NASA, and they would argue for the country. And doing it on a commercial basis is an entirely new way of approaching this. These are, these are, I don't want to call it Uber for space, but NASA's basically hiring a service. And they're hoping in the process, by being a big customer, uh, that private industry will then move out into low Earth orbit for other things besides just the space station and really open a new era for human spaceflight. You talk about this new era, Bill. If it is successful, do you think it really is a new paradigm for the American space program? I think without a doubt, you know, if uh, you know, you could talk about space hotels or or flights that could carry university researchers, for example, space tourists uh, into space that wouldn't necessarily have to involve the government directly, like NASA. Now, NASA, of course, is an anchor tenant, if you will. They're going to be the the primary customer for these new spacecraft. But the but the dream is to move private industry out into space, not just low Earth orbit, but eventually uh, to the moon and even beyond out into the solar system as a more efficient, cost-effective way uh, to develop these spacecraft to carry humans out into deep space. And what do you think comes next for NASA and SpaceX, Bill? 
Well, you know, this flight is, is getting all the attention, but it's an unpiloted flight. You know, Ripley, the, the astronaut test dummy, is on board, but no astronauts. The next big milestone comes in July, where if everything goes well, SpaceX hopes to launch two NASA astronauts aboard this same type spacecraft on a flight to the space station. Boeing is building another spacecraft that's going to do the same thing. And eventually, by the end of the year, NASA hopes, operational flights will be underway with these commercially developed spacecraft. But getting there is going to take a lot more work. There's a lot of testing required to make sure they're safe. But that's the goal. Looks like everyone's vying for a little piece of this uh, space operation. Absolutely. Bill, Bill Harwood, I want to thank you so much for joining us to break this all down. Sure thing.